Yo, Ryan, listen, man. I need help with these marketing terms. Like, I am so confused. Yo, what's good, Craig? So you need to understand two types of data. There's behavior and sales data. Uh-huh. Being successful in this industry requires taking a data-driven approach and actually looking at the numbers. Yeah, 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 I got you, I got you. Look, man, you gotta understand, these analytics features are highly underrated by both producers and the beat-selling platforms. She's a runner, she's a track star. She gonna run away. Don't be like Craig and run away from the most important part of selling beats online. Let's talk analytics. Uh, we got that mother <laughs> So what's good everybody welcome back to the heat channel dare i say the number one spot for producers learning about marketing and selling their beats online the people tell you that you're the best there's a lot of people say they're the best and they're not the best see i say we the best and i represent the people and if you're not subscribed that may or may not be one of the reason your beats aren't selling who knows now before i even start with this week's video guys I already know there's gonna be a lot of questions raised, but we're prepared for that. Everybody on the Heat team is ready to reply to the comments, so just go ahead and drop them below. I'm sure you're gonna have a ton. So, analytics. Now, to make sure you don't fall asleep in this video, we are not going to nerd out on these terms, but we are going to define them and give you examples of how they relate to you as a producer. Now, to start off and make the for some complex subject of analytics easier to understand, let's first break this down into two segments, behavior data and sales data. Behavior is based on a single user's engagement with your beat store or website. Examples are plays, download, likes, shares. Now looking into the sales data. This is how many beats you sell, the profits you make, how many orders you generate, how many visitors or listeners end up buying from your beat store. That was just, that was a tongue twister and a half, all right. Both sets of data are extremely important for making marketing decisions that can help sustain the growth of your business. When used correctly, it acts as a guide to tell you where to focus your marketing efforts on and which direction to go with your music. We'll get back to this soon. Let's talk more about behavior data. Now, behavior analytics are the bare bones and what you usually see on your beat store dashboards. Like I said, these are plays, visits, downloads, likes, and shares. On the surface, this data is good, but we like to refer to this as the upper layer of data. These metrics are also what's known as vanity metrics because these metrics by themselves don't really give us anything to act upon in our marketing game. In order to make this useful, we need to break through that first upper layer of data and see the bigger picture beneath it. To further break this down, what's the source of these visitors and where are they coming from? From a geometric aspect, where in the world are they coming from? And also, which beats get played, downloaded, and sold the most? Once we learn more about this, we may notice an increase of visitors coming from, let's say, Instagram. So you might want to then double down your efforts on Instagram and make more Instagram content to be more active and hopefully drive more traffic. If you see an increase in visitors from certain countries, you can then run targeted ads specifically for those countries. And if you see a certain beat performing really well in terms of plays, downloads, or sales, you might want to create more in that same style, place it higher up on your beat store playlist, and well, promote that beat. Now, especially for starting producers that have yet to create a sustainable income from selling beats online, behavioral data analytics can be useful to avoid time-wasting marketing efforts. If you never realize that all your traffic is coming from Instagram and you just focus on YouTube because that's what everyone says to do, you just wasted all of your time in leaving the platform that was showing you the most success. Think about that. That's just dumb. You guessed it, sales analytics, well, they're based on- Muffins. Sales, they're, they're based off sales. Sales data is generally used to track the success of a previous period. While this is great, it's only a short-term benefit if you do not capitalize off of this data. 
Last week, when I was once again digging into Robin's brain, asking him for help with some of my sales, he explained to me how he reads sales data and what kind of action he takes afterwards. Now, when Robin started working with Ruje back in 2018, one of the first things he did to help him was analyze his then current and previous sales. Then he took a full year of sales and turned all of the data into averages. Average number of orders per day, average amount of profit per day, and the average order value per month. And if you don't know what average order value per month is, it's the average amount of money a customer spends in one transaction. We'll cover some more of these terms later on, don't worry. Also, now is the time to get out a pen and paper and start writing down these terms if you have yet not already started taking notes. Now to continue Ruje's upward trend in sales, Robin wanted to help him increase the sales without it being dependent on the success of Ruje's YouTube channel. So in other words, even if for some odd reason Ruje's traffic would not increase the sales profits should still be going up. And he pulled it off. Let's look at the average order value or also what's known as AOV for example. In 2019, Ruje's AOV was $58. In 2020, Robin got the AOV to $86. And so far in this year, he's got it to $96 for the average order value. That's almost doubling the profits per order. Pretty insane stuff. This video won't show you the exact things he did to get those results. Instead, we'll show you the key data metrics that Robin used in the process. But if you wanna learn more, I highly suggest you sign up for our free masterclass. In this free masterclass, Robin breaks down the success of his own business and how he was able to grow from zero to making six figures a year. You'll find a link below to sign up and watch for free in the description below. So now let's get back to the sales data. The metrics we just mentioned, again, make up for an upper layer of data. Beneath that layer, there are other metrics that are more important. Let's start off with the conversion rate. This is what percent of visitors end up buying Beats. We use this to track whether our Beat store continues to convert at healthy rates. If you're experiencing low conversion rates, it could have something to do with the audience that you're targeting. For this, we can then cross-reference our geometrical data. Whoa, hey, whoa, hey, you falling asleep on me? better wake up. Another metric is the average number of orders per day, which is obviously the average number of orders that you get in a day. You better not be falling asleep. He did not double profits for you just to fall asleep. You wanna learn about selling beats online, but you're falling asleep. Don't fall asleep, wake up. Next is the profit per beat, which is just the amount of profit you make per individual beat. This can be used to compile a list of your top selling beats. And if you add a date parameter in there, you can then calculate how much profit was made from a beat in a certain time period. Robin always calculates these things when someone reaches out for the exclusive rights. With this metric, he can somewhat calculate his future revenue for that beat. So if somebody offers him $500 for one of his beats, but his data tells him that this beat is generating the same profit in two months, it may not be worth selling the exclusive for that price. Now we have average profit a day, which is just how much profit you make on an average day. Just being able to see these numbers helps you stay focused in a time period of whether you're going over or below your averages. Lastly, we have the average order value. This is the average amount a customer spends in one single transaction. This metric shows a direct results of your sales tactics, your overall marketing strategy, communication skills, and the general user experience. I'm sure we'll cover all of that in a later video. And as in later video, I mean next week, we'll be covering how to get a better user experience for artists on your beat store and how important user experience really is. Let me put it to you like this. What do you think is easier? A, getting 10 people to spend $25 or B, getting five people to spend $50? The answer is B, but if you thought it was A, that's fine. In fact, that's what many producers think. Answer A means you need more traffic, while answer B means you're making the most out of the traffic you're already getting. But don't worry, these are just the vanity metrics messing with your head. We'll help you with all of this stuff. You just need to subscribe to the channel. It's just, you just click the button, you click the, it's, it's red, you just click it, then you click the bell, and then you tune in every Friday at 12 p.m. and you just learn. I mean, it's truly amazing what modern technology has done. I don't care what you say, that's making the final cut. Lastly, we're gonna tackle the topic of customer lifetime value. 
This represents the total amount of money a customer is expected to spend in your business during their lifetime of being a customer. This metric is definitely one that falls into the category of long-term benefits. Here's what we see a lot. A lot of producers consider one single sale the end result of their marketing efforts. But in fact, it's only the beginning. The real money in selling beats is the recurring sales from previous customers. If someone purchases once, that's only a small win. If they buy twice, that's better. But if they come back for a third time, that means this customer is hooked on your music. And I bet you, the next time they work on a new project, your name is the first that pops up into their head when they need new beats. And what if I told you there are ways to enforce this and gain more from your first time customers? Now, it's simply too much to cover in this video because Robin and I literally wrote a freaking book for the script of this one, but Robin did do an entire lesson on winning over customers for life in our free masterclass. Once more, you can find that link in the description below. It's completely free for you to watch and sign up for. All right, now that you guys have learned all of those terms, I'd like to give you your degree in marketing terms for producers 101. Now this will be about $40,000. And if some of these metrics that we covered are new to you, I would advise you to do your own research and learn even more about this. Selling beats is a numbers game, but it's not only about subscribers, followers, likes, or your one-off sales. Remember, these are just the vanity metrics, that upper layer of data that doesn't give you anything actionable. So once again, thank you guys for watching this week's video, and I'll see you guys in next week's video where we talk about user experience experience. As always, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Peace out. Uh, we got that mouth. <laughs>